Welcome to the live stream. My name is James Bernard. I'll be your host today. Checking in the chat, see who's joining us. I think we've got people from all around the world. I think I saw some different countries popping by there. Italy, I believe Norway. Uh, I think we have some people from New York. I'm a native New Yorker for myself, so what's up? Uh, thank you guys for joining us. I think we also see some friends of uh, Spectrosonics in there. I think Bob. Hey, Bob. Uh, I think I saw Jason, Rocky Mountain Sounds in there. Hey, Jason, thanks for joining us. Torok, Bob Daspit. Hey, Bob, how are you, man? Torok, thank you, man. Very cool to see him in here from Italy. Napoli, wonderful. Thank you guys for joining us. Really excited. We have a lot we're going to be uh, talking about today. Um, but first, let's talk about what we released yesterday. We released a major new update to the Keyscape Creative Library, which is a library for Omnisphere and Keyscape users or owners with over 1,500 sounds. There's a couple hundred new ones in there, and we have a number of new faces and people on our Spectrosonic sound design team. So there's going to be a lot of sounds in lots of different genres and some different perspectives and takes on sound design. So you should really check it out. It's free. So if you own Keyscape and Omnisphere, all you got to do is click in that Get Updates button that pops up on the UI when you first open up the, in the instrument. And that'll take you to the page to update the software. Anybody here in, in, the, in the chat has uh, played with the, the sounds lately? Anyone uh, have any favorite sounds that they played with? Let us know in the chat. We'll like to see what you, what you think of the update. So we have a lot of great stuff coming up today. And we've got some special guests. We've got some behind the scenes. And you could win a copy of Omnisphere and Keyscape as well. I'm going to be in asking a question later on in the stream based upon something we talk about here. So pay attention and stay with us. So first of all, I want to take a little trip behind the scenes of the creation of the new unique double felt grand piano that we released last month. So anyone who has Keyscape, if you have not updated lately, you should go update because it's a gorgeous new sound in there, the double felt grand that is free. And we're going to take a listen to that sound first before we do the behind the scenes. So I think we'll have our special artist guest today. Hey, Julian, would you do us the honors and let us hear this beautiful sound, please? Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs>
Beautiful. Thank you so much, Julian. We're, we're going to be talking to Julian a little bit later, a little bit more with you later on. But right now, we're going to jump into a little bit of inside info on how that beautiful sound, the Double Felt Grand, was created. And for that, we're going to welcome someone very, very special who's one of our most important Keyscape collaborators. He's a legend in this town, being one of the world's greatest and most in-demand piano technicians. Please welcome our great friend, the one and only Mr. Jim Wilson. Hi, Jim. Hola, James. Welcome, welcome. Good to uh, see you, James. Did you, did you mean to say he's a legend in his own mind? Well, well that too, I guess. If, yeah. <laughs> We think of you as a legend as well. Oh, thank you, man. Of course, of course. So Jim, your list of clients is basically a who's who of music and has included everyone from Quincy Jones to Paul McCartney to Dr. Dre to Chick Corea to David Foster, Bruce Hornsby, Elton John, et cetera. I, I mean, it's probably easier to ask who isn't a client of yours right now that you've worked we with? <laughs> um, hang on, let me give that some thought. Um, George Santos okay. is, uh, is somebody I've done. Hey, wait, wait, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm being told that he actually tunes pianos. It says on his resume. I thought he's he a created piano. them all too, didn't he? Yeah, he created he the piano. Pianos too. I'm, uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm um, extraordinarily grateful and, and blessed to have worked with kind of all my childhood heroes. And sometimes it's, it's just, uh, it's overwhelming and I have to kind of stop and pinch myself and I'm just mm. so grateful. And before anything, I just want to say how grateful I am to Eric and the whole Spectrosonics team for the opportunity to work and create some great sounds together for over the last decade with Keyscape and Double Felt. And I'm uh, just the gold standard, you know, everybody there is just the best human beings. And yeah. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. That's actually, that leads me into my next question. How did you actually get involved? In, in collaborating with us on Keyscape? Well, let's see. Mr. Persing uh, approached me back in 2014 and said, hey, we're working on this new library mm -hmm. of, of sounds uh, and signed this NDA, by the way. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we want to include a piano into this collection of virtual instruments and we'd like it to be yours. Wonderful. So, uh, oh, okay. So, right behind me is that piano. Wow. And uh, I said, uh, how about instead of a piano, how about the piano? And there's this thing that I've been doing for certain clients with, with all pianos, but uh, particularly the Yamaha, taking when, it, when the hammers needed replacing, removing the old hammers, putting on these Renner Blue Point Vikert felt hammers. And uh, they're my favorite mm. piano, piano hammers to use. And, it's the, they were the hammers from the days of yore of uh, the golden era of Steinway. Wow. And then the Berlin Wall went up and then they became no longer available, that particular type of longer fiber felt. And uh, just recently in the past decade or so, they, they revived that, um, that process, that fi fiber, and uh, they've become available. So I've been doing that now and it's, it's with great result. And Wonderful. so that's what I did on Keyscape. And, and that's what we hear on the Keyscape C7, the LA customer. That's exactly, yeah. Yeah, that, that one right behind me, yeah. So talking about felt, um, moving on to the, to the double felt sound. So traditionally, when, when you think about a felt piano, um, you know, anything I've ever heard of when you're dealing with felt pianos, it's, it's an upright, yeah. right? Yeah. And, they, and they drape a piece of felt across, this, across the strings themselves. Right. But, right. but for the double felt grand, you actually used a, a grand piano. Can you explain yes. a little bit about the process of how you had that up? Because I, I would imagine that's, that's, that's a whole different setup. A bit different, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah. So um, yeah, Eric had mentioned that he, we talked about this and how, what a cool sound that is that a lot of composers are doing that and, and uh, taking an upright piano mm -hmm. where the strings are like this and the hammer is like this and comes up and hits the strings like this. Just put a piece of felt in between and it gives us really great muted, dark, warm vibe. Character, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and Eric said, I wanna do that with a grand. It's like, okay, uh, I'll get right on that. <laughs> well, there's this little thing called gravity. And um, so with the upright, the strings are like this. Grand, strings are like this. So the hammer comes up and hits, hits it like this. 
well, how do you put a piece of felt here? So I, I marinated in that for a uh, couple of days and I, then it occurred to me, maybe it's easier to wear sandals than it is to carpet the whole world. <laughs> so I took a uh, piece of felt. Oh my gosh, what do we have here? Well, well look at that. Oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, class. When you push the key here, the hammer comes up there. Observe. Eric, are you paying attention? There's gonna be a test. Um, so no, I had this idea of um, instead of having one global piece of felt for all the hammers, what about individual strips of ham of uh, felt? So I went down to the uh, fabric store and got a ton of different types of, of uh, felt mm. and landed on this, which is natural wool. And I put it on the hammer thusly are we seeing this class, class, anyone, so, anyone, yeah. Bueller, Bueller. <laughs> and um, so the, it comes up and hits the string and it's, it's wow. muted. And I, I tried that. Uh, well, yeah, I, that works. So, uh, and we went for uh, two pieces of felt to give it this really dark, gorgeous, you know, otherworldly tone and, and uh, God, I'm so thrilled with how it's, it's turned out and, and the responses that everybody's, you know, giving it. So, so two pieces of felt, so hence double felt grand. That's, that's, that's the name. You're a fast one, James, There's man. You picked <laughs> right up on that. <laughs> Wonderful. So I kind of always wondered that, you know, when we were first developing it and, and looking at it saying double felt. What, what, why is that say double felt? So there it is. That explains it. So it just means it's twice as good. Multiple felts. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you for that. I, I actually heard a rumor that there were some moments when you were making this that you thought you might pass out during the process. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the, there's this, it's like, oh, okay, great. It felt uh, 11 millimeters wide, put it on the hammer. How do you fix it? Well, I tried <laughs> just experimenting. I tried with rubber bands. I said, no, you really need to uh, fix it properly. Mm. So I, I got super glue and, uh, and attached one end to one side of the hammer and then draped it over and then did the other one. Mm. But you have to kind of get right up on top of it and, People do not try this at home, please. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> what kind of glue? <laughs> oh, super glue. No. It's not the kind that you would uh, yeah. <laughs> use as a recalcitrant teenager to, to go off and have fun. This is the kind that gives you this roaring headache. Yeah. I'm not kidding. The day after we, we did this hours and hours of applying each individual piece of felt yeah. two times to uh, the hammer, uh, I, I woke up the next day with this massive headache and yeah, do not try this at home. And I was seeing some, some questions in the chat that the, the actual piano itself that was used is, is also the C7, correct? It is a, uh, a, a high quality instrument. A high as, quality instrument, okay. So as, we don't, we as don't as know I what the- saw in the description is. Okay, <laughs> thanks, because so, people were asking on that. So um, question, what's it like to hear your work that you've done in Keyscape used by so many musicians around the world. It's so gratifying. And, um, you know, I, I'm a recording artist as well. I've had 10 CDs and a few times on the Billboard Top 20 Wonderful. and a couple of PBS specials and 95 million streams of my music I just found out. And So you made like but, $50 off of that, right? <laughs> streaming. <laughs> exactly. I'm going <laughs> to take you out to lunch. For yeah, excellent. Um, but that to to your question of what's that like is so that's the very piano that i created all this music on mm. so then to hear um these great composers film composers using it in their work it it's just so it brings it full circle for me and it's it's so gratifying to be uh of service to their art and to to uh create sounds and be a part of the music that's you know reaching people that's wonderful it's it's a, it's wonderful i'm so beyond grateful excellent well i heard jim that you have an interesting book coming out soon um what's that <laughs> oh about? well it's about gardening and um there wonderful. just aren't enough gardening books by piano technicians <laughs> no uh oh gosh james you you got me you know this is uh it's something that's been in the works for a, a number of years. And um, uh, 
I just had wanted to cobble all these fun stories together that, uh, you know, I've had the extraordinary fortune, fortune to be able to work with just about every hero I've ever had. And there's this uh, moment in my life when I'm driving back from the South coast of England to London, a two hour drive in a limo mm. where I just had a magical four hour hang with Paul McCartney sitting on the same piano bench with him. Okay. <laughs> it, Talking about everything from you know the Beatles and and uh, singing a Beatles song and I, I think I've heard of that band. Yeah, this kind of surreal moment where uh, this you're just going okay, this is really happening. Yeah, you are sitting on the same piano bench with a Beatle, <laughs> and just be here. And uh, it, it was, and I'm just thinking, how the hell does an insecure West Texas kid <laughs> end up there, and then? Later limo rides with Elton John and and road trips with Carol King and and uh, horseback riding with Dan Fogelberg on his ranch and so I you know just kind of thought man I I need to cobble these things together uh, under one roof and just been hammering away at it and then of course there's the bigger narrative of me and my pursuit what brought me out here originally to L A you know I wanted to become the next Jackson Brown and ended up instead becoming the next Jackson Brown piano tuner so <laughs> life will take you some weird places it'll take you different places and <laughs> yeah, then i had a sure. had a profound uh, moment in my life when when a very close friend of mine died and i saw how easily uh, those dreams can kind of vaporize into thin air yeah and that's what made me focus on okay well what what is really important is it just tuning for all these cool celebrities or is it about making some kind of artistic statement so more on that later this is the first that I've talked about this publicly and well, well I'm definitely excited it sounds like it's going to be a really interesting book and and I think thank you James it's going to be one to to look for for sure oh I'm well, I'm honored I want to thank you Jim for for coming oh, in with us please. today here and giving all that information behind the scenes yeah. and, and sharing that thank you good luck with the book as well thank you thank you James honored to be here Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit more into the new Keyscape Creative Library in a minute. But first, uh, I wanna get to know our special artist guest today, a truly gifted and incredibly versatile keyboardist, an artist, a sound designer, a producer, engineer, and live performer, and that is our friend, J3PO. Hey. 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 Welcome. Thank you. Good to see you again. Yes, it's been a little yes, while. yes. It's so great to be here, man. So, we've been we're big fans of yours here at Spectrosonics. I think oh, you know that already. We have been for quite some time, mm -hmm. and it's really, really cool to actually have you officially with Spectrosonics and involved with us now. So, so I'm super excited to see mm -hmm. all we're going to be able to do together. Absolutely, I'm wonderful so having you. How did you actually initially get connected with Spectrosonics? Ooh, man, it's been a it's been a while now. I'm trying to remember, you know, here, say what? I'm going to rack your brain here. Yeah, I got to rack my brain, you know. <laughs> I, I think, I think, uh, where did I meet Eric? Somewhere here in L.A. I think I, think, a, I think I have a clue for you. Yeah? Yeah, I, I heard that you guys met at a show. It was somebody's show. I think it was Corey Henry's show. Was it? And it was, I believe, Eric met you and Nick. Ah, uh, Nick Semrad, yeah. In line. That's actually probably true. Now that <laughs> so I think Eric about it, it mentioned something right? About that. So yeah, that was the initial meeting. Yeah, initial yeah. Chat. I heard you guys were chatting for quite some time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Who's yeah. who to be there to see Corey Henry? Play. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, Nick had to stand in line, even though he's in Corey's band, you know, <laughs> just to get on stage. No special <laughs> favors here. <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think I met Eric there, and you know, Eric's super involved with the scene here. So I mean, we uh, I, I couldn't even pinpoint point that one time because there's other times as well and then you know we've worked together on other projects and uh, I've been a fan of Spectrosonics you know since before then oh, that's you know uh, always thought it's the, the best stuff in the box that, thank you or out of the box too actually for that. <laughs> but um, yeah so mm -hmm. so I, I speaking about our products you you just in the last year I believe have released your own library for Omnisphere correct yes I so have. what was that what was the pro process for that like for you um, is it you know, atmosphere is a beast. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it was a little intimidating at first. I had been putting out a lot of preset libraries for hardware synths, like you know, 
Prophet 6, OB6, a lot of sequential stuff, Nord stuff. Um, and I had Omnisphere, and I always was like, man, the, the presets in Omnisphere are ridiculous. But as soon as I opened up the, the tabs, I was like, oh, like, <laughs> well, there's a lot hold on, to this, them. This, yeah, exactly. This is not a Prophet Six. This yeah. is a completely different yeah, times four. <laughs> yeah, I do have a Matrix Twelve though, Oberheim, mm. and so having a little experience with that Matrix yeah. style, Matrix uh, you know, sure. it, it definitely uh, made it less intimidating. Um, but what was the the way I initially got that library started is. Um, I had gotten an OBXA during the pandemic, so mm. that was always my dream synth, so mm. I finally got one. And uh, I decided I wanted to try and recreate some of those presets that I had been making on the XA, which are very simple, sure. exactly within wow. Omnisphere. And seeing that you know, the, the, digi uh, the DSP waves are you know, modeled on, like you can get an OB uh, saw, yeah. pulse width, all that stuff, um, and the, all the filters, I was like, I gotta figure this out. So I started just recreating presets I made in hardware, but within in Omnisphere, and once I started doing that, I like made my OBXA startup patch. Wonderful. And from there, I was like, oh, well, if I always have this as my startup, now I can get into this mod matrix, and oh, this is actually pretty easy. That you just route this to here, and That's and great. so uh, it became a thing where uh, at first Omnisphere was very you know daunting, but then uh, once you get on there, it's. It's actually very simple, and the, the the you know you can do anything with it. Which yes, is, yes, know. indeed. There's there's so many possibilities. Yeah, you can be vintage. You can do just straight up vintage synth sounds, or you can get into the most crazy stuff that we haven't even thought about yet. Sure, glitched out granular, granular, or hey, what have you. Yeah, you're speaking my language. <laughs> exactly. So, um, I think recently, right? You you just did a, a week long stint at the Blue Note. In yeah. New York City with uh, someone who actually has a, quite a connection with Spectrosonics and yes. history with Spectrosonics. Uh, yeah. It's part of the one of the very first products yes. that we made, Bass Legends. Yes. Um, and it's also a great friend, good friend of Spectrosonics and Eric. Uh, that's Marcus Miller. So yes. can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. I've been playing with Marcus Miller for about five years now, toured the world with him. Um, it's been awesome. Yeah. Um, really fun to play with him. Such a great learning experience. Talk about rhythm and funk time and just uh, learning from a, an excellent band leader. I think a lot of people in that band have come away with uh, a, a, an appreciation for what it means to be a band leader and to lead a show, but to still be you know, involved with jazz, but you know, dishing it out to the public too and yeah. having, having people love it. Um, I, there's this uh, image that just popped in my mind. We were in Japan last September and Marcus is, Marcus is always working on a film score. Always. Like, we'll play the show, and he goes back to the hotel room, and he's working on Scoring. film score until 7 a.m., and then we go to the airport. Wow. But, um, machine. Yeah, he's a machine, and he always he uses all Spectrosonics products. Yes, of course. But we were in Japan, and um, he wanted some of the band to play on this thing. He was, I think it was, the, it was a baseball documentary on Apple TV or something like that. And um, we set up uh, our keyboard, the keyboard backstage, and I was playing Spectrosonics. Uh, I was playing the C7 for... <laughs> you know, <laughs> recording a quick thing before we Wonderful. went on stage for his film score. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, before we go on, can you just play this thing for me? Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. wonderful. Wonderful. Exactly. And, yes. I, you know, speaking about playing live, you, you got a gig coming out tonight, I think, right? Aren't you yeah. playing at the Baked Potato tonight? Yeah, Baked Potato, so If man. anyone's L.A.-based, you know, go, yeah. go down and check out Julian. You're still out there. You do Absolutely, your thing, so. man. I'll, I'll see if I can, uh, you know, pull myself away from the kids and the fans <laughs> and check it out. <laughs> so I, I do want to ask you, and I've been meaning to ask you this, um, you know, I know your name Julian, but your yeah. artist name J3PO, where yeah. does that come from? Great question. Um, so that name is a little play of, wor of letters on my initials, J okay. for Julian. Uh -huh. That three actually is a W on its oh, side. My middle name w. Okay. is Waterfall. Legally, that's my mom. Like the B3 kind of thing? Exactly, Waterfall wow, B3. Oh, really? Um, so, that's cool. Uh, yeah, Waterfall is my mother's maiden name, and uh -huh. then P.O. Pollock. And that name came about because I don't, a friend of mine just randomly called me that one time, like over a decade ago. And um, when I was in my early 20s, I was only playing acoustic piano. I didn't know anything about synths, keyboards. I had like a Nord Electro. That was, that was as far as I went into keyboard land. But something shifted, and I just got really into synths, and, and I got really into the... By the bug. Exactly. <laughs> I got into the talk box, of all things, because I was just always infatuated with Zapp and Roger and that Absolutely. sound. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I started, I wanted to put out a project, but I felt like for my own artist profile as Julian Pollock, it was just like a little weird to go yeah. from putting out the sensitive piano music to uh, this kind of alter ego thing. So I decided I was going to put out that music under that name. 
uh, just because it seemed fitting to have, you know, the Star Wars reference, C-3PO, J-3PO, yeah. talking droid, musical droid. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. Anyhow, I've, since then, I've kind of ditched the whole talk box <laughs> yeah. thing. But the J-3PO but, Exactly, the yeah. J-3PO <laughs> thing. I just started putting out the preset packs under that and started putting out beats under that, Instagram. And, wow. you know, uh, it's funny. I guess in a way, I wish, you know, I didn't have that now, But <laughs> you know what? Man, you know, we always go through that as artists, right? It's like, I picked this name, yeah. and now this is my name. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. We're here different. now. Yes, and here we are. We're here now. <laughs> can, you, can you tell me a little bit about your, your uh, family background and how you got started with music? Sure. Yeah, I come from a musical family. Uh, my mom's a concert pianist. She taught me piano. Uh, and uh, actually, to this day, uh, we still do performances together. We're playing some. Really? Uh, That's we're, wonderful. We're doing, performing some uh, Mother Goose Suite by Ravel this summer at the Mendocino Music Festival in Northern California. Oh, no way. Really? Yeah. That's and great. Uh, my dad is a conductor and uh, also a saxophonist. Okay. Um, I've been uh, getting him to practice with the metronome recently on, like, <laughs> on these kind of like weird metronome exercises. He's been really, really stoked. With saxophone. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Wonderful. So he's been stoked about that. So music is a, a huge part of our family. And my wife, uh, who is a visual artist primarily, uh, played saxophone all through uh, uh, middle school, high school, and most of college. Um, then she switched into visual visual mm -hmm. art. But she knows, you know, all the Charlie Parker stuff. So like, it's a huge in our family. It's you know, uh, uh, it's, it's it's the food. Yeah, yeah. It is a it's a wonderful thing too to have a partner that also appreciates music and is a musician. Exactly. Too. Myself, my wife as well as musicians. Yeah. I, there's just something about you know yeah. getting our little moments of like yeah. craziness that we go through as musicians and right. they get it as well. Shared knowledge. Shared it's knowledge. In is the family. So, That's so wonderful. Crucial. Yeah. Uh, so, what was your also another question? What was your schooling like? Ah, schooling. Yeah. Um, I grew up in uh, the Bay Area. Okay, right and in Berkeley. The Bay Area as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, I love the wow. Bay Area. Shout out to the Bay. Um, I, got, I think I, I was really lucky because uh, in middle school, I went to this school called the Crowden School. And uh, every morning, there's two hours of music. It's all classical music, but um, and there's no but there, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, not, not jazz. Or, you know, <laughs> we like classical. Music. Yeah. Um, so uh, that was a huge part of my, part of my education, the mm -hmm. kind of the focus, the practice. And then I went to Berkeley High. Mm. And there's a great jazz program there. Are just uh, uh, so many people have come out of that program. Joshua Redman, Ambrose Akinuzure, uh, Justin Brown, Jonathan Face Finlayson, Crazy. Peter Affelbaum, Benny Green, uh, the Samora Pinder. He's uh, the, there's the list goes on. And there's just an environment in Berkeley, especially at the high school, to just like in high schools, get good at your instrument. You know, that's it. yourself. That, yeah, man. It was. Um, and then I went to New York for school, I went mm. to NYU, mm. and then New York really was the, the school. You know, yeah. Being on the streets, going to Just clubs, being there, yeah. and being in the scene. So that, that was the education. Well, that's wonderful. Well, it, you know, it's, it's cool. Um, it, it, I definitely get the feeling you, you actually, you love to learn, right? So, yes. So what have you been practicing? Lately? Lately, these days, yeah. On the piano? Well, in general, yeah. Pianos, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, um, I'd say uh, lately, uh, been, uh, on the piano, I've been practicing a lot of Bach. Okay. I love Bach. I've been kind of religiously studying the preludes and fugues. Mm. Um, and also recently, uh, actually tonight at the Baked Potato, we're doing all Monk tunes. Oh, really? And, I, you know, it's funny. I, I, monk is always a, was always an enigma for me growing up. Uh, I, um, I love it now. I love his music. And so I've been really diving into Monk and just learning those tunes. And that's been really fun. I've been practicing a lot with the metronome and, like, you know, just trying to get my time better. Um, yeah, I think it, you know, just it never runs out the the stuff to work on, you know. And, and and with sound design stuff, always transcribing sounds, listening to records. Like, been obsessed with Taylor McFerrin, his his yeah. just the way he uses, scene, you know, like just listening and trying to recreate those sounds and then have my own take on them. So, I don't know there's there's always something. Yeah, there's always something to learn. Yeah, always that's what makes us fun. Exactly. Yeah, that's the reason we do this, right? We always want to learn more. Yeah. So it's cool to, to see how much knowledge that you actually share as well. Mm. So it's more, more you know, it's not you're like you're getting all this knowledge and just hoarding it for mm. yourself. You know, we're seeing you share a lot of your knowledge on your, your social media channels, mm. um, yeah. on your YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, is that something that you keep plan on keeping exploring? Is, yeah, you know, no. I, share your knowledge. And absolutely. That? I plan on making like a synthesis sound design course, oh, cool. you know, uh, just cool. kind of my approach to it. Um, yeah, yeah. I've been teaching private lessons over Zoom, doing uh, 
sound design lessons in synthesis, and it's been I've been uh, kind of blown away how responsive people are to it, and what, there's so many aha moments that people have. I think we're coming into this era now where it's like learning synthesis, just basic synthesis, mm -hmm. should be quite required, just like learning music theory. Yeah, and it's it has the same components. I always tell like I see these people who are so well versed in bebop or gospel music, stuff that is very harmonically dense. And when it comes to like, hey, do you know what a sawtooth wave is? They're like, no, I have no idea. It's like, well, you just played the most crazy harmonic yeah. stuff of all time. <laughs> that takes and, a lot. Yeah, a lot. so just, just take a couple weeks and learn this. Yeah. So I'm, I am designing this, this, uh, this course, hopefully, and you know, busy with touring right now and yeah. putting on music, but I, I, I <laughs> 15 love- 15 million hats at the right, same time. Right, exactly, but I love, I love the education uh, component to it, so I definitely hope to be doing more of that. Excellent, yeah. well, we'll definitely be looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's not, I can say that there's not very music, many musicians these days that I would consider equally strong in, in uh, piano playing, in synthesis, in both hardware and software, in studio and live performance, mm. and all the different genres that you cover. Mm. You just sort of like lots of different musical genres. It's, and I, I wanted to know, like, what, what drives you to explore so many different areas? Um, and how do you find the time to do that? Because I, I know for me, that's hard to find the time to do all the things that you want to do sometimes. Yeah, um, I think it's just a curiosity. Um, ever since I was a little kid, like when I'd see a magician perform a card trick, mm. at once I'd be so enamored with the emotional response that I'd have to what just happened, but then the technical side behind it, how is that effect being pulled off? Yeah. So whether it's Andras Schiff playing the Bach Preludes and Fugues, or a really sick patch in Omnisphere, yeah. or something, you know, I'm in, this, in the grocery store, I'm hearing the latest Taylor Swift thing, or I'm hearing Brad Melow play, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being emotionally transformed and technically, like anything that's combining the heart and the mind. Yeah. And I just have this drive that I actually have to kind of curb sometimes of wanting to know <laughs> how to do it. So like with modular sense, I have yeah. just made it a rule in my house that I will never do it because- <laughs> Don't do it, I, I already seen, went down I that hole. we talked a little bit about in the past <laughs> that it's like, it's one of those things like, oh. Yeah, do you want to make music? <laughs> right. Don't so, get into modular. Right? Yeah, and in terms of time, you know, I just, you know, I have a kid now and yeah. it's, it, it's amazing how the time is, it gets, vanishes. Yes, I have but, five, I understand. <laughs> What is time? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I just I you know late nights, any any time. I, 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 my favorite thing to do is to learn something new that has nothing to do with what I'm supposed to be doing. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. It's <laughs> really a way to keep your brain kind of yeah. going for sure, man. Yeah. Well, super inspiring and awesome to have you here today. Thank you. Thank for you so me. much. Cool. Really, really great to have you. <laughs> Thank you. Indeed, so. How about we start talking a little bit about Keyscape Creative? Absolutely. Think? So, you know, as, as I said earlier, you know, it's a wonderful new libra library, uh, expanded library of over 1,500 sounds. Yeah. Really focus on, on showing the power of using all of the newer features uh, that have been added to both Omnisphere and Keyscape and all the features that exist already, very advanced pieces of software. Oh, yeah. When you combine them together, you get just this large library of wonderful sounds that really expand beyond what the initial waveforms and sounds were that were in Keyscape, so all right. of the original pianos and things, right. including the new Double Felt, which is right. another thing that we really focused on with the right. new update. Um, and also there's a few Easter eggs. I think there's an Easter egg in there that you might talk about that, that we did have a couple of questions yeah. pop up on the chat about the yeah. effects, but I'll, I'll let you okay. go into that one. So I think, uh, I think it would be good for you to kind of go up and sure. show us a little bit of what it's all about. Yeah, let's talk that. about it. Oh, yeah. Julian, everybody. <laughs> Um, yeah, so let's talk about these new crea uh, Keyscape Creative patches. Um, there's so many amazing ones in there, and if you have Keyscape and Omnisphere, and you haven't already updated, do so immediately and explore, because there's a lot of fun stuff in there. Um, before I get into it, I just want to briefly talk about the technical side of what we have going on here. We have a, an A88 keyboard, which is just a MIDI controller, and uh, that's controlling uh, Omnisphere. And we have also a MIDI fighter over here, which is just an encoder and some buttons to control certain elements within my session. 
uh, everything from filter sweeps or I can map it to do anything, to, uh, you know, delays, uh, distortion, patch changing. Um, but, uh, and the way this is gonna work is I'm gonna show you some patches um, from the library. And then I created a composition, which doesn't have a name yet, which I'll play for you at the end, um, that uses a bunch of patches from the library. Um, let's uh, dive into this first patch though. This one is called Starlight City and it was uh, created by the amazing, I think it's Tobe made this one. Yeah, he made this uh, incredible patch. Let's listen to this. Let's listen to where that patch originated. It actually originated in, um, uh, sorry, in Keyscape, and it's just a humble Wurlitzer patch. And now let's listen to what Tobe did with it in Omnisphere again. Let's listen to that now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Let's listen to that with, without the effects. We're going to turn, turn the effects off. Still really cool. Let's listen to it now with the effects. from Keyscape, I really love the sound of that. Um, one thing that's really interesting about this patch that I'd like to hip you to is how that kind of arpeggiated pitch thing is happening. Just because I, when I first pulled up this patch, I was surprised. I thought it was the arpeggiator, but it's actually a looping envelope um, that's uh, modulating the pitch without those, uh, without the mods, it sounds like this. Still really beautiful, but with the looping envelope. And add in the effects. Cool. And that uh, mod wheel just kind of washes it out. We're going to go on to this next um, patch here called uh, Big Tack Strummer. Uh, I'm going to play you the original sound source first, and that is a uh, tack piano from Keyscape. Westworld uh, fans out there. I wonder if that was actually used on the, uh, on the original score. Probably. <laughs> So this is the sound source, and now, if we head over back to the patch in Omnisphere, this is what we did with it. So what's cool about that? Part <laughs> so what's cool about that patch is we're using the mod wheel to wash out the sound with a low cut and a reverb send. Uh, that's a really great way to transition whether you're writing a cue or if you're uh, you know, playing live and you're transitioning into the next song. Love little effects like that. And I want to know who actually uh, wrote, who made this patch. Well, Seth Norman, awesome, really cool patch. Uh, also, the, really important to see this arpeggiator. So as I said, uh, the original patch is just sounds like this, thumbtack, but with, key, uh, with Omnisphere's arpeggiator, I mean, uh, the, the options are limitless with creating this strummed sound.
Oof. You know I love that reverb. <laughs> um, we'll go on to this next patch here. Uh, this is Euphoric Pianet Stab. Great for like trance, EDM stuff. Almost like a sawtooth but gnarly and the reason that is is because the original sound source which is on this other patch over here it's a pianet so instead of a sawtooth wave we're using the pianet as our waveform and with clever synthesis and effects we turn it into Uh, this patch was made by Ignacio, I see here. Awesome, I love that, I love that. Um, ooh, this next one. This next patch, um, <clears throat> I actually used in the composition that you'll hear a little bit later. This is great for like, uh, you know, cinematic, epic moments where you have like a pulsating rhythm. Let's hear what this patch sounds like. Let's listen to the original sound source from that, which is the Humble Roads. Beautiful roads, but with a lot of synthesis and multi layers. Let's actually go back to this, the, the uh, GUI. Yeah. So let's look at these layers. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Two instances of the roads. We've got a nice wave that's being. Uh, uh, arpeggiated, actually not with the arpeggiator, but probably with an LFO, and a stack of with the MKS-20 and a, a lot of effects to make it sound like. <laughs> Distortion, delay to cause those upper register percussive hits. Let's actually listen to this without the effects, just out of curiosity what it sounds like. Oops. That just shows you how important effects are when you're doing sound design. Um, a lot of people think it's, oh, just the synth matters. No, it's the effects and the synth that matters. And of course, in, uh, in Omnisphere, we have such great effects. Cool. Once again, that mod wheel washes out the sound. Anyhow, I hope some of you users have, have, the, have the library and have had a uh, a chance to check out some of these patches. They're so fun. This next one is called Sifting Through Sound. And let's listen to this. Very cinematic. Uh, definitely, uh, this could be the opening scene for... How many things? Um, and uh, let's listen to the original sound source, which is actually going to be the same pass, just effects muted. So, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty incredible uh, what the effects do. Let's actually see what's going on with these effects. Um, let's, I'm going to go back. Sorry, that was not. Here's the patch. So we're using this inner space on a few of these layers. Yeah, and of course, some of the new secret sauce reverb from Keyscape to bring us. Wow, so incredible. Um, who created this one? I just want to know. Seth again, nice, very nice, Seth. Um, Let's go on to, ooh, we have some more patches, fun. Okay, this one is called Verbed Out Roads, and I made this one. 
Uh, if you know my music at all, you'll know why. <laughs> So that's just a Rhodes with the new Keyscape reverb. And uh, what I love about the new reverb is it reminds me a lot of my great expensive hardware uh, reverb pedals that I use live. You know, one of my favorite things to do is to plug in my vintage vibe with a, a reverb pedal and just vibe out. Let's listen to that Rhodes without the reverb. Actually, something I want to tell you about on this patch is if you're hearing this slight kind of pitch dip, that kind of lo-fi, it almost sounds like it's skipping. What I'm doing there is I'm actually using um, an LFO. I'm using a heartbeat LFO uh, that, that uh, yeah, that's, that's a really cool LFO to use, uh, especially if you want to create like that kind of skipping sound. You just use that uh, combined with, uh, or modulating the pitch slightly and you get... And um, I also have my, uh, my uh, pitch wheel over here tuned to a fifth uh, or seven semitones. And the reason is because I like to be able to play a, a, like a minor seventh chord, like C minor seven. And if I go all the way to the right, I can actually get G minor and down, I get F minor seven. So you get a much more kind of musical sound. Let's add the reverb back in. Really fun, and I've mapped also um, with the MIDI fighter here, um, I've mapped, uh, you'll see right here, this chorus echo. I've got uh, the button right here on the MIDI fighter to turn that on and off, and so a few of the controls are manipulating what's going on inside the GUI. So I can easily turn it off just like a real hardware delay pedal. all those delicious delay artifacts and you can turn it off on and off just like you would with it <laughs> appreciating the encouragement from the uh, from the live audience let's go on to this next patch the, by the way these are all uh, patches that you're going to hear in the tune that I'm going to play for you uh, coming up um, this one is called Riz bass saw it's kind of aggressive EDM style synth Once again, we've got that reverb uh, uh, being, mod uh, being modulated by means of the mod wheel. Always great to have your performance controls on the mod wheel so that you can do something interesting within, within your live playing. Um, this one's interesting to me because of the sound source. Let's listen to the actual place it's coming from, which is the double felt, which we were playing earlier in that mellow fashion. Let's do it again. The real actual. Okay, completely different using uh, the double felt as a sound source. Um, and one of the ways that we're getting that cool distortion is by means of, uh, you can't see me porting here, is by means of ring, uh, ring modulation and wave shaping. Wave sh uh, shaping can, can give you such interesting distortion. All right, we'll hear more from this patch in a little bit. This next one is called Trunk Shaker. Who made this one? Seth again. All right. I guess I randomly been. I'm, I'm, we got to hang out, Seth. Uh, so this is just a classic 808 style uh, bass. And I, uh, the the mod wheel is opening up the filter. And on the MIDI fighter over here, I have distortion mapped. You can see in the effects. When I twist this knob, I'm just uh, affecting the dry and wet. So that's cool for performing. Um, and uh, I love this, uh, synth, uh, this patch because uh, where it's coming from is, if we look at layer two, this key bass. And 
and now we have an 808 by means of Omnisphere. But it shows you, you know, it's, you're, you're taking a, you know, a, a bass instrument that, you know, has elements of a square wave, which are, you know, something that we use very often when we're synthesizing 808. So it makes sense. And uh, it's cool, rather than just using like a DSP square wave, we're using an actual instrument source. So there's going to be sort of uh, ver slight variations um, and cool tonal characteristics uh, to the final patch. You'll hear more from that later. This next one is also really awesome. This sounds kind of like a baritone guitar to me or a, some sort of weird bass guitar. Oops. Huh. Um, and... <laughs> Um, let's listen to where this patch gets its origin once again. <laughs> double felt. But that makes sense because the double felt already has those kind of those artifacts from the felt causing that kind of that tack from the pedal. So when we listen to the manipulative version, we're just really bringing all that out and some other genius sound design uh, stuff going on behind there. Let's see, look at these layers. So we have three instances of the double felt there um, and also a saw square wave. So there's a lot going on in this patch. Um, uh, yeah, really interesting. When, you, when, you're, when you're browsing through these, these patches, um, when you download them, I, I highly encourage really kind of getting in there and seeing, seeing what's there to, to kind of learn how these things are being crafted. Um, because what better way than to dissect a patch to learn sound design? Um, let's go on to this final patch that I'm going to demo for you. This is another one that I created. I actually uh, manipulated one from earlier in, in the library. This is called Solid Tine Lead, and it's just a kind of a lead synth sound. <laughs> I expect tonight when I play my gig that after every line I play, I get applause. <laughs> um, anyhow, um, this 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 uh, patch is uh, uh, its sound source is coming from the Vintage Vibe Keybase. But we've transposed it up. And uh, this is a really cool thing about uh, using a keyscape instru instrument within Omnisphere is uh, making a lead sound, often you want to just have one note playing at a time, a, a monophonic sound rather than a polyphonic sound. And we can do that very easily within Omnisphere. So we're using our sound source as a polyphonic Rhodes. Uh, and then in the end, by making it a monophonic instrument, adding distortion and cool effects, we have a synthesized lead sound. <laughs> And as a player, because of the instrument and the way, you know, the dynamics respond, we're getting those variations in tone. Uh, across the board. So it, 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 you know, it's very expressive. Um, anyhow, that kind of brings me to the conclusion of just demoing these patches for you um, soloed. Um, I'd like to play a little something I wrote for you that now incorporates the past six, seven, eight patches. Um, and in the, in, in the tune, uh, everything uh, that you're going to hear, all the music, is, was created with this new Keyscape Creative Library, except for the drums. The drums are not. Uh, maybe another time. There's our, there are folks on the team here at, at Spectrosonics who can do the whole thing just with an atmosphere. I'm still learning. Um, so yeah, let's 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 listen to this tune. Uh, if anybody has a cool title name, feel free to uh, to uh, put it in the chat. Um, let me make sure this is all working. Cool. Cool. So uh, yeah, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna play this track for you now.
That was insane. That was insane. Yeah, man. I think you actually, you've probably played more notes in that performance than I've ever used in all of my albums I've released in the last 30 years. But that was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you so Appreciate much. It. Thank you so much for being here with us, oh, for Thanks sharing for your time me. with us. Thank you to Jim Wilson for being with us as well. Appreciate your, your time and show, giving us some of that behind the scenes. Really, really, really appreciate that. And I think right now it's time to do a little giving away. What do you think, huh? You guys ready in the chat? You guys ready? Let's give some stuff away. So this is going to be for Omnisphere and Keyscape. If you already own those instruments, we can give you two other instruments of your choice of ours. So we'll, we'll figure that all out after the fact. But the question is, what is Julian's middle name? And I'm looking at the chat. So first one that pops up, you win it. Come on, Julian's middle name. You guys, you got it somewhere in there. Nobody, nobody, come on. How, 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 ah, there we go. We got someone. I am gonna mess up your name really badly. Oy Vind Bjorka, how do I say that? You win, it's the first one that's on there. So congratulations, someone from the team will, will get in touch with you via email, so we'll get that all sorted out. Thank you to everyone for, for tuning in today and joining us on the live stream. Really appreciate you being with us here and you guys in the audience, thank you for your enthusiasm. Appreciate that, okay? Okay, so thank you so much. We'll see you guys again sometime soon. Cheers.